Hello, thank you for stopping by. I'm so glad you're here. In this video, I'm going to be making a pair of grandpa pajamas using this pattern from the 1920s. Why am I using a sewing pattern from the 1920s? Well, I'm a giant nerd and I think it'll be interesting. Uh, this is probably not gonna be substantially different than uh, similar patterns you can still buy from like the big four websites or uh, a thousand used patterns on eBay, Etsy, Mercari, Facebook Marketplace. Men's uh, pajama patterns are a dime a dozen. So if you want to make a similar pair of pajamas, do you need to go out and find an old pattern like this and spend way too much money on it? Absolutely not. I will try to link down below to a couple of sources of similar patterns. What do I mean by grandpa pajamas? I mean these things that became popular in the early 20th century and they were originally made from fabrics like a lightweight cotton or linen or even silk if you were a little bit fancier. But as the 20th century progressed and people didn't want to spend as much time caring for clothing, especially not something that you're going to sleep in, uh, polyester started becoming more popular for pajamas. These grandpa style pajamas were also made from woven fabrics rather than knits. So they had to be sort of loose fitting in order to be comfortable while you slept. But I think starting uh, around the 1970s, there was a big explosion in the popularity of knit fabrics and the availability of knit fabrics. So men's sleepwear has mostly transitioned to uh, loose fitting knit fabrics now. So for my grandpa pajamas, I have decided on a cotton linen blend fabric that I found, this right here. Uh, it is that sort of classic light blue grandpa pajama style or color. And being a linen cotton blend, it will have a little bit more of the softness of cotton and a little bit of like the uh, durability and antimicrobial properties of linen. In keeping with the theme of using a pattern from the 1920s, I decided to use a sewing machine from the 1920s. It is a Singer 128K, I think. Now the first thing I did, because this pattern is so old, is I traced out all of the pieces onto new paper. Then I decided to check the sizing just to see how I feel it would fit. Starting with the trousers, I could tell by looking at the pattern piece that it was not gonna fit me whatsoever. It was enormous relative to me. So uh, I took my NC measurement and compared that to the pattern piece, shortened the piece by that much. I think it was about two inches and then reattached it nice and neatly. And then going from previous experience with this style of pant that's meant to sit at the natural waist, I knew that I would have to shorten the area from the crotch to the belly button. So I took that measurement and I shortened that down, I think another two inches. So I shrank down this trouser pattern piece by like four inches in height. And it seems like it's gonna work much better uh, with my body style because I have the legs of somebody who's five foot tall and the torso of somebody who's six foot tall and uh, my actual height is somebody, somewhere in the middle. Next, I did some measurements of the shirt, keeping in mind that this is for pajamas, so it needs to be loose fitting. I measured around my widest part, which is my belly. And then I measured the shirt around that same area and it would have given me like two inches of ease, two inches of ease. Uh, and that did not seem like nearly enough for me for a comfy, like loose fitting night shirt. So what I did is went down the middle so I could widen it a few inches to give myself a little bit of extra width. But I also went crosswise and gave myself a few inches height because I know from previous experience that with the belly sticking out a little bit, it sort of tends to pull the front up and uh, that will sometimes make the hem of the shirt uneven. I am not switching the back piece at all. So the back piece is staying as drafted from the pattern and I am altering the front piece to just give it a little bit more width. The idea is that hopefully it will keep the side seams in the correct spot. And then because I did make some changes to the pattern pieces, I wanted to do a mock-up. So the mock-ups came together pretty easily. Uh, I didn't put more than an hour or so of work total into both of them. The pajama top is definitely gonna need to be shortened a little bit, but very easy to do. But I'm very happy with the fit. It gives me plenty of room in the belly and uh, it's still sort of loose fitting and comfy. Uh, but it's not too, too baggy in the back. And the side seams are hitting where I want them to hit, like right down my side. And the hem does seem to be hanging evenly like I wanted. I did have to gather the side front a little bit 
in order for it to fit the back piece properly since I made the front longer than the back. And uh, I was just sort of quick and dirty with it for the mock-up. I will be a little bit more careful with it for the actual sewing. The fit on the pajama bottoms is also good. The distance I took off from the crotch to the belly button so it sits at my natural waist seems to have been the right, uh, the right decision. I'm happy with that. And the inseam measurement seems to be pretty good as well. Uh, once I hem them, they should be hitting right where I want them to, right at my ankles. Since these mock-ups fit, I'm gonna get started with the actual sewing. Constructing these pants was pretty simple. These are just two pieces, a right and a left. So you start by fixing the fly on either side, then sewing the thigh seam together on either side, then attaching the two pieces together at the crotch seam. Then you do a little bit of hemming there uh, on the bottom uh, of the trousers, the pants, then uh, adding in a waistband uh, just by sort of folding over. It's just a big hem. Uh, in this one, I did have to add in some elastic, which was kind of a pain in the butt to like cord the elastic through following the instructions in this pattern. Then it was time to move on to the buttonholes. And I have tried multiple times to hand sew a buttonhole. I tried again this time. I know how to do the stitch, but I can't get it to come out neatly. And uh, I just don't have the manual dexterity anymore to get a nice clean hand sewn buttonhole. So I went to my trusty machine buttonhole on my Kenmore 1941, uh, 1914, and uh, it came out great. And this buttonhole attachment is like super precise. So I make the initial buttonhole with the machine uh, and then clip it open. And there's usually a little bit of, you know, messiness after I clip it open. So with this buttonhole attachment, I can line it up pretty precisely with the beginning of the buttonhole. And uh, after I've clipped it open, I can make another buttonhole on top of it and it comes out nice and neat and uh, tight like this. So uh, it's my favorite way of doing buttonholes now. Then it was time to start on the top. Uh, just cut a front and a back piece on this. Then there are a couple of collar pieces which are sort of end up being like a facing slash collar. Uh, you can see one piece is longer than the other one and that one sort of gets tucked in to like a little hole and covers things up. Uh, it came out fairly well. Uh, then top stitching these things down, then uh, sewing on the sleeves. This took a lot of gathering on the sleeve caps. Older uh, patterns have a lot of gathering on the sleeve caps, much more than modern ones. I don't know w w what that's all about. And then uh, you can see how I'm finishing the seams here with just like uh, sort of an easy filling. I take the seam allowance and fold it one side over the other to nicely uh, keep it nice and clean and then I top stitch it down. Uh, and then when I sew sleeves on the flat like this where it's just one continuous underarm sleeve or uh, underarm seam, I like to hem the cuffs and the bottom of the shirt first so that I don't have to go back and hem them once they're sewn. So while it's still flat, I make the hems on the end of the sleeve and the bottom of the shirt. And then when I sew the long um, underarm side seam all in one, it automatically is hemmed at the end of that. And here are the finished pajamas. They are very comfy, uh, pretty happy with them. This is a, a great project to do. Uh, if you haven't made like a woven shirt before or a pair of pants, getting started practicing with a pair of woven pajamas is always good. Uh, I was a little bit out of practice, so uh, it was good to refresh my skills a little bit. Uh, I really like this collar style here where it's uh, kind of a collar, kind of a facing, uh, but it doesn't come up onto your neck. Uh, I really like this. I think I'm gonna adapt this for future shirts. Through here, I thought I was gonna be clever and um, like reinforce it and do a little bit of like decorative, like uh, satin stitch through here. And I, I, I wasn't paying attention and I sort of did it uh, lopsided. Not super happy with that, but it's, it's fine. The length is pretty good. These are very loose fitting, which is how they're supposed to be. In the future, uh, if I did this pattern again, I would do a sloped shoulder adjustment, uh, kind of bunches up through here and is a little bit tight through here. Uh, so I would adjust this a little bit to correct it, but it's comfortable to wear. I've got a fairly thick hem on the shirt, but uh, it, it came out good. I'm also happy with the fit of the pants, the adjustments I made to this area. Uh, worked. Everything sort of fits properly. 
the adjustments I made to the leg work. Uh, they hit my ankles where I want them to. Uh, the way I ended up doing the elastic, uh, it, it called for doing it on either side with the pattern and I just did one panel uh, right here in the back. So that sort of bunches everything up and makes the butt area a little bit wrinkly and baggy, but I'm sleeping in these. So like a little bit of extra room in the tuchus isn't a, a bad thing. Now I have a nice, light, comfy, cool pair of pajamas to wear uh, right for the summer heat. So it's perfect timing. If you have made pajamas like this before and you have any tips or tricks for making the process easier, please drop a comment below and let me know and anyone else who watches the video who might find that useful. Uh, or if you're trying to get through it for your first time and you have questions, ask down below and maybe me or someone else can help. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. And if you have not already, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the future.